Hello YouTube. Ever since I did the Hyundai throttle body video where I was trying to use the Pico mask to isolate or capture the problem happening, I've had a lot of questions about Pico masks and how to use them. Here we have a setup where we're going to use the uh, Pico scope. I got a basic 555 timer set up here. We're going to use this uh, to uh, basically demonstrate how to use a Pico mask. I wanted to give a special shout out to Brian Collada at Train by Tex. He has a fantastic video showing Pico masks and going into detail about it. I'm going to do my rendition of it, but check out trainbytex.com. Also, this is a fantastic read. If you're trying to learn more about electronics and understand electricity, uh, Practical Electronics for Inventors, it's about 20 bucks on Amazon. This is a fantastic manual. All right, so you're probably asking, what is a Pico mask? How do I use it? And when may it come in handy? Um, I'm going to answer those questions, maybe out of order here. But first of all, the Pico masks are a function of the Pico scope. Basically, we capture a pattern on a screen. This is our pattern that we captured, and you see this is stopped. I told the scope software to draw a pattern around that. And we'll get into that in a second. I'll show you how. Now, I got to tell you, I think that the Pico mask function uh, in the PicoScope Automotive is a carryover from PicoScope's scientific products. You know, they're uh, high-end, laboratory-grade scientific instruments. Being on the automotive side of things, I don't think it's something you're going to use every day, but when you do have an opportunity to use it, um, it can come in very handy. Anytime that you have a repeatable pattern that you can use a trigger on your scope to make that pattern come on across the screen at the same point every time, like we do here, if I hit the play button, you'll see um, the PicoScope mask function can be used. We have an electronic circuit that's putting out a solid signal, same signal every single time, and as you see here, the mask function is working to uh, go around that pattern. Anytime that this goes out of bounds, the mask is going to record it. I'm going to go ahead and induce a quick problem here, and you're going to see what happened. We had a mask failure. It says mask failures three. It draws a yellow line when that happened. So we're going to hit the stop button, and we can find when it went out of bounds. So up here we have our buffer history, and we want to see when our channel A went out of bounds. So we're going to go to mask fails on channel A. And now this is going to show us every frame, every buffer frame that it went out of bounds. So we frame 11, 19, and 20. And if we click on one of these, we watch our blue pattern and our blue went out of bounds right here. And you see the scope drew that yellow line to let us know we we're out of bounds there. If we go back to frame 19, we can see we went out of bounds over here. Okay, and we're also out of bounds up here. This by itself doesn't have a lot of diagnostic power. We know that we have a sensor failing or a circuit that's failing, but where it comes in handy is using the other channels of the scope to watch other uh, inputs such as powers and grounds. What we can do is I'm gonna hit the stop button and I'm gonna clear these masks and also I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna delete them. So you guys that haven't done this before, uh, your, your setup will be about the same. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We have a basic 555 timer circuit, and it's supposed to be an extremely precise timer, and this should be happening at a regular interval, this LED blinking. Now, over here on the scope, we can see that we have a pattern that's moving around, but if we stop, let's just take a look and see, see what our on time is. Okay, we're just going to use a ruler real quick and take a look at this. And we're reading 290.5 milliseconds. Let's lock our ruler and we can scroll through our buffers here. And we're just going to check and see if our on time always matches. And that's pretty darn close. I'm just taking a look. I'm going to scroll through here to verify that we do have a consistent on time for LED, and it looks like we do. So, when we're gonna be using a mask function, we have to have a pattern that's repeatable. Now, like I said before, we probably wanna look at some other things. So we've got our scope hooked up to ground right here. This is our ground lead. And we also have uh, this red lead, which is channel B, is uh, going to our positive. Channel B is going to our positive rail. Our green lead here is measuring ground, and our blue lead, channel A, is measuring the actual voltage at the LED that's blinking. So we should turn on uh, channel B, which uh, 
we're going to put the 20 volts because that is our input voltage. We're going to put that there. And also, we are going to turn on channel C, which we're just measuring a ground. So if you're checking a ground circuit, I'd say put that to 2 volts. And we'll see what's going on there. So what I'm trying to show you guys is that if we just have this scope rolling here, the trigger is none. You see, we have no trigger. And I cause a fault. I'm just going to ground my power here real quick. Cause a fault. The signal drops out. And we can find that if we hit if we knew we had an error we can hit stop and we can scroll through our buffer here we can go ahead and cruise through our buffer and find wherever a problem was oh there was a problem right there we caught it we can see our power dropped out that's one way of doing it but for a more intermittent condition we need to have another way of doing it and this is where the pico mask function comes in so we're going to go ahead and we have to set a trigger i want to show you guys uh, something about the triggers and setting them up uh, for this. If we put our trigger to auto and we have it here, if you watch our pattern as I create a short or create a circuit problem, the scope continues to draw a pattern. It, uh, we can't see what happened, but as I turn this on and off, I'm just tapping this to ground, we see that the scope keeps on drawing. If we put this to repeat, um, which I don't recommend for doing a uh, trying to find an intermittent problem if you're scoping out the uh, signal that you're concerned with. If we put it to repeat and I short this around, watch what happens. The scope stopped drawing. If we have our trigger set to repeat, the only time the scope is going to uh, capture a pattern is when the trigger criteria is met. So if we don't meet our trigger criteria right here, the scope's not going to capture anything. So if I just short this out right now and I'm holding it here the scope stops on the last frame that it caught so that's no good so we gotta always make sure when you're doing this in my opinion the way I do it I put it to auto all right if you guys want to learn more about triggers and stuff like that we can we can do that another time so with this on auto I'm gonna hit the stop button and we know that we have a our pattern on the screen here this is our pattern that we're looking at that we're concerned with it dropping out we're going to go to tools, we're going to go to masks, and we're going to add a mask. Now, we want it to be channel A. We could choose whatever channels we have here, but channel A is the channel that has a signal that's repeatable. I'm going to go ahead and hit generate, and I'm going to click that and hit apply. All right. Now, I want to show you something here. I told you this was a pretty precision timer, right? You know, we were talking about having a certain amount of on time, I don't remember what it was, 250 milliseconds or something, 291 milliseconds, something like that. I'm going to pretend that we don't want this pattern to drop much out of this range. Let's, let's see here. If you looked on that screen, it set us up for a 50 millisecond plus or minus, and that's what the scope is reading here. So 50 milliseconds plus or minus on our time, I want that to be less. So I'm going to go ahead back and go to masks, and I'm going to clear this mask. I'm going to go back to tools and mask and I'm add a mask and we're going to use the same one but we're going, hit, we're going to hit generate again but I'm going to turn this down. I want this to be a tight pattern, 20 milliseconds. Uh, let's try 10 and let's go for 200 millivolts up and down and we're hit, going to hit generate and hit apply. Now can you see how tight that is, that pattern? Now I'm going to clear my ruler and we're going to hit the play button. So we're going to see when this fails, and we can already count our fails on the bottom here. Every time that it fails, it's counting it. So there's been three failures. And we can see our failures by hitting the stop and go to our buffer. Now, this will show all buffers like this. We can just click on mask fails on channel A, and let's take a look what happened. Every time channel A is failing, it's going in, uh, into the mask. It's drawing yellow. So what we're going to do... We're going to go ahead and right click anywhere on our waveform, go to mask, hit edit mask. Now, if I click over here, I'm just going to click a point right where that is and I'm going to drag this up because I'm not worried about a spike right there. That's almost like a normal condition and I'm not too worried about it. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that up like that. Now, if I hit the play button, we'll see if we go out of bounds here. 
So right now we have zero failures. We've captured six frames or buffers. And it's just going along here. We can let this go for a second. And as you see, even when we have little spikes, we're not uh, going out of bounds. We're coming close, but we're not going out of bounds. So that's great. Okay, so this is the mask at work. Now that we have other channels mapped out, we're looking at our ground circuit and also our power circuit, our power supply circuit. If I create a, a error, it records it and keeps on playing. We can see that we had our error, okay? But we're all, I got all these buffers, you know, if you, we keep on counting up, we don't have to go through all this stuff. So we can hit the stop button and we can hit the buffer and we want to see masks on fills on A. And that's what we're looking at. All right, so here we go. We can clearly see that as this problem happened, as the blue one went out of bounds, let's go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit. We can see that when we had a problem and we went out of bounds on our mask, that it was our power that was coming and going. We were dropping out our power. I was technically shorting it out, shorting our power to ground, but that's what was happening there. I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button again, and this will start to start the process over. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about making an alarm. If we want to be alerted when this happens, you just click on alarm. And we want this to, whenever a mask fails, we want it to beep at us. We're going to hit apply and hit OK. So we're going to go ahead over here. And if you, uh, you know, you hit the play button, we can go, we can be going for a walk or whatever. If we have a loudspeaker hooked up to our computer, which most of us don't, uh, we could po potentially be alerted to uh, when we have a fail. So if you watch over here, I'm just going to tap this. And you see that we had it record and it beeped at us. I hope you guys can hear that, but if I tap it again, I mean, just a quick tap, it, it knows that we're going out of bounds. That's the beauty of that. Okay, so running through here quickly to show you guys how we would do this, kind of from scratch, we'll put our trigger to auto. We got our trigger level set up. We're gonna go ahead and go to tools and masks. We're going to go to, go to add mask, channel A. Generate. I like the tighter time, and we can bring down our voltage too. And we'll have to add our little spot that we did, and we'll hit apply. And we're gonna go ahead and hit OK. Now I'm gonna right click on a desktop, go to mask, edit mask. And I'm gonna draw my points in here, add a point for the spike. And we'll go and go ahead and OK. And we can hit the play button and we'll see what we have here. So we're in bounds, right? Now, we know how to add an alarm. You go to alarms and we want to add an alarm on a mask fail. We want it to beep, right? But also, we would like to add a capture. Save the current buffer. When this thing acts up, let's make it so it saves a buffer. And we're going to put it to our desktop and hit save. So right now, we're going to hit apply and hit OK. Now when this thing acts up, I'm going to hit the play button. We should get ourselves a beep and also a file save right to our desktop. It'll save the buffer. So I'm going to make our error happen right now. And... Did you see that on the screen? I hope you guys saw that. It's saved. Let's do it again. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the stop button. So this is an example of where you could be recording forever and not even have to ever worry about how much memory you're taking up out of your scope or computer or whatever. Because if you go here to my desktop, I've got these two files right here. It saved them. And if we click on it, all that's saved is the buffer. Okay, it didn't save all the buffers it saved one buffer as you see here it just has a one and of course as this thing goes out of bounds it's still saving other things but that is what we have so that is the power of this scope i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you want more videos on the picoscope let me know have a great day everyone